you have your Bibles now, would you join me in James chapter 1, where we'll be looking at verses 1 through 4 for today. James is now writing unto uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, which is suffering Roman persecution. They have been forced out of their homeland and forced to live in the hills of Palestine. These were very trying and challenging times. And because of those challenges, infighting and quarrels and arguments began to take place upon the people of God. They began to fault one another for their circumstances. They began to not trust in God's deliverance. They even began to fault God for their persecution. How should the people of God handle trials and tribulation? Let us read now in James chapter number 1. Verses 1 through 4. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know the trying of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect, and complete, lacking in nothing. Let us pray. Dear God and Master, we come now. We thank you for this privilege and opportunity to share your word. We ask that you would illuminate us, give us clarity, wisdom, and knowledge according to the truth of your word to be able to speak to your people. We thank you for this day. Continue to protect and cover us. We thank you for the goodness of Jesus Christ who died for our sins. He atoned for every one of them. That we, filled the rags in the eyesight of God, can be called the sons and daughters of God. We ask now, dear Lord God, that you continue to bless us. Bless your word now. Give us understanding. We ask it in your son, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Alexander McAlphin preached a sermon once entitled, Faith Tested and Crowned. In that particular message, he makes the distinction between being tested and tempted. He said, temptation is to appeal to the worst part of man, in which man would yield to the operations and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. But then on the other hand, when we are tested, he said, it is appealed to the higher nature of man, the one that is called by God out of darkness into the marvelous light. In every opposition, in every trials and tribulation of life, we have the opportunity to be tested or tried. How do we fare? when we are faced with tremendous opposition and adversities in life? Do we count it all joy when we enter into various trials and tribulations? Today, I would like to propose to you that every believer can count it joy when they enter into trials and tribulation because God is producing within us spiritual maturity. Let us now look at the Word of God. How can we uh, count it all joy when we enter various trials and tribulation? How is it that we can hold fast and trust and believe in the assurance of God's Word? Well, James tells us that we can count it all joy because the trial of our faith produces steadfastness. Let us read verse 3. For we know the testing of our faith produces steadfastness. The word produce means to avail, to give opportunity to spiritual growth. When we are tested in our faith, we are experiencing our opportunity for spiritual growth to be able to sustain us in trials and tribulations. There are other words for the word steadfastness that is used in other translations, and they are patience and endurance. 
Patience is the ability to wait on God with an expectancy that he will deliver. Endurance is the ability to keep going in spite of what we're facing. To know that God is bigger than our circumstances. Nigel Turner, in his book uh, entitled The Christian Words, he defines steadfastness as the unruffled expectancy of God's deliverance. We should not tremble, we should not be afraid because God will deliver. Hebrews 10 and 35 through 37 encourage us by saying, therefore, we should not throw away our confidence, which we have, that has great reward. For you have need of endurance, so that when you are done the will of God, you will receive his promises yet for a little while. And the coming one will come and not delay. Oh, what pleasure it is, what joy we find in knowing that God will not delay his coming to deliver us out of every temptation. For in his word, he says that God has given us a way of escape with every temptation. There is no temptation coming to man whereby God has not made a way of escape. What joy we find in knowing that there is an escape route out of whatever trials we face. God is good. If this building was on fire, as you can see, there are specific exit signs over the door to let us know that is the way that we should run in case of danger. Jesus said in his word, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. He is the only way, and through him and with him we can obtain steadfastness in our trials. But not only is God producing within us a steadfastness, but God is also producing within us perseverance. Let us read verse 4 again. And let steadfastness have its full effect. To have full effect means to persevere, to continue. Trials come into our life, and as they come, God is developing us into his only begotten son. We are being conformed to the image of Christ. Sadly enough, though, many of us abandon ship during trying times. We fail in our faith, but yet God is gracious. God will keep us and sustain us during our trials. We must put our faith in him. We must continue onward. I've been trying to lose weight for a while, and every time I begin, I start out with three days and four days going to the gym, working out, and I create this unbelievable regimen, and I'm, I'm exercising, and I'm loving every day, but one day I will wake up, and all of a sudden I've lost hope. I've only seen so small in my new changes. I haven't seen the drastic changes that I desire. And so because of those subtle changes are not drastic, I give up hope and I lose trust that the thing that I'm pursuing after, the image that I desire to obtain, is lost. And this is how it is, my brothers, when we turn our face from God and turn inwardly to ourselves. We must trust God during those times because God is developing us. He's shaping us, he's molding us, he's, he's shaping us into the image of his son who for the joy of the cross, he endured it. Even the disciples, the apostles, as they encountered persecution and thrown in jail, when they got up, they felt it, it was great joy they will count it in the suffering of Jesus Christ. We too should have joy when we face trials and tribulations in our life because we know that there is an exceeding reward that is 
there for us that we will obtain because we endure it to the end. Not only has God given us steadfastness and God has given us joy because he is developing within us perseverance, but we can count it all joy, brethren, because God is creating in us a perfect, complete man, not lacking anything. Let us read again verse number four from our passage at this time. It says, let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. There is joy in knowing that you have continued with God. There is joy in knowing that in those temptations that God is with us, that he is sustaining us, that he is still sovereign and ruling over his kingdom and God and his people. This is the joy that we should experience when we're going through our trials and, and tribulation because we know that God is a good God. Let us read 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 through 24. It says, Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your spirit and your body be kept blameless at the coming of the Lord Jesus, who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. What will the Lord do? He will make us blameless at his appearing, at his coming. The mortals shall put on immortality. The incorruptible shall put on incorruptibility and we shall receive an unfading crown of glory. This is the reward and this is the hope of our salvation knowing that Jesus Christ shall come and receive us unto himself and we shall be caught up with him and receive an unfading crown of glory. It's like a race as we run it. Sometimes the laps get harder and harder. And sometimes we, we want to stop along the roadside. We feel like we should rest. But I want to encourage you. The Bible said, be not weary in well-doing. God will strengthen us. He will cause us to mount up wings of an eagle. We shall run and not faint. We shall walk and not be weary because God will sustain us. The joy in knowing that God will supply our every need is the hope of salvation. To know that he is with us, that he is for us, and he is able to sustain us, as he said in his word. The work that I have begun in you, I'm able to complete it. God is going to someday complete his work within us. But it will only be for those that endure to the end. We can find joy because God has created in us steadfastness. He's created in us perseverance. But he's created in us mostly into the image of God. This is the hope that we all have to endure to the end. Let us pray. Dear God and Master, we come now and thank you for the joy that you have given us in these trying times. We pray for those that may have been suffering the virus right now, the coronavirus, the Lord God. We ask and pray that you would sustain them, strengthen them, to recover them from their illness, if it be according to your will. We ask God now, the Lord God, continue to protect us. And we love you. May we have the joy uh, during this time of persecution and in affliction and the Lord God in temptation, knowing that you is the author and the finisher of our faith. These things we ask and pray in your son's name. Amen and amen.